Hey, we're back here this evening, or I said this afternoon. It's this afternoon for Charlie Freak. We have Charlie Freak and we have our Patricia. So, hello, guys. Hi, Karen. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Karen. Hi, everyone else. Mwah to you. Charlie has come back because he's going to be talking about a subject called crucifixion. So we're really looking forward to this. I know I tried to explain it to someone today and they looked at me because, of course, in our minds, we have what the word relates to. But anyway, Charlie, it's very nice of you to join us and come and explain this. Oh, you're so welcome. It's uh, such a pleasure to be back. And it was so much fun on part one, which I hope that everyone will take the time. If you're hearing this, um, then I uh, deeply encourage you to go back and listen to part one. And um, it's a journey. And it led us to, as uh, Karen said, crucifixion. So basically um, explaining the, the process, Karen, um, again, the, the sacred gift that God gives us, um, helping us to discover God and to ascend ourselves out of this horrific, horrific physical reality that we find ourselves living in tied to jobs that we don't want to do. And it makes us frustrated and angry. It makes our kids frustrated and angry. It gives us um, horrible relationships with, with family, with ourselves, with friends, with enemies. <laughs> It's just, it's a horrible existence because of all the things that they've created. So the gift that God gives us within ourselves is this chrism oil. And if we can, if we can allow ourselves to become healthy enough, both physically and mentally, and raise the chrism oil on its journey back home, up into the center of our brain, the third ventricle of our brain, then we can achieve what is called heaven upon earth. And that is essentially a balancing between our two worlds. Um, the metaphysical world where we are spirit and the physical world where we are earthly beings tied to mother earth. And, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful process. It's a beautiful relationship. And it's, it's what um, Colleen and I practice uh, daily, monthly, and um, have have taken um, some you know really big steps uh, in changing our lives permanently for the better uh, by following this process. So where we left last time was uh, bringing the chrism oil back up into God's realm, which is could you just God's very realm. quick, Charlie? Charlie, just explain yeah. what, remember on the last hangout, you said that what the Bible really was, it's about knowing yourself and it's about yourself and the journey in you. And then we'd got to the shoulders. That's right, yeah? And then it's the crossing right. over. We got to the blood-brain barrier. So, and, and that is exactly right. The Bible is, the Bible is not a history book based on, on uh, <laughs> these uh, different characters running around. They're, these people did not exist. They're allegorical stories. They're metaphors for human physiology. And of course, all of this comes first in the night sky. Astrology is God's language. It's God's science. It's God's math. It's God's idiom. It's his language. It's how he speaks to us. And everything that we could possibly want to know exists in the stars, in the sky, in the relationship of the sun and the moon to one another, in to earth and to us. And so understanding astrology is key. And because everything that the night sky is talking about is us, is human physiology. Everything that the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, uh, the Buddha Sutras, um, uh, all of these ancient um, uh, spiritual texts are all talking about us. They're talking about human physiology. And then when, when you look at our body, you'll see that it plays itself out perfectly to what we're reading and what we're seeing in the sky. And so it, it is magical how we are connected to everything and everything is connected to us. And it's so important to, to God in terms of us under, understanding ourselves, or as you said, Karen, knowing ourselves, 
it's so important to God that, again, he's written it in the sky. And then these people that came along, Zoroaster of um, Persia was the first to do so, decode the night sky. And so therefore, um, Zoroaster and Zoroasterianism is essentially the first Christian religion that branched out to um, Hinduism and Buddhism and eventually um, Roman Catholicism. And these are all forms of Christianity. And they're all talking about the same thing. The same goes for the nation of Islam. So you think it's, Charlie, isn't that really weird that we go to these churches and we talk about it in a completely different way when it's a book that's meant to be something else? And yet we're going to churches and we're not explaining it properly. Unbelievable. And it's it's um, devious and it's sickening because they absolutely know what is being said. The, the documents that do exist are very, very clear on this. They absolutely are aware. The, the Roman, Roman Catholics um, <clears throat> are not, this is not a religion that is designed to help you understand God. This is a control mechanism. The Roman Catholics are simply a, an arm of what I what are the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians, who were the pirates of the high seas, are the ones that have come onto land, bringing admiralty laws of the seas onto the land illegally and tricking us and trapping us into a system of laws that essentially control us. And agencies like Roman Catholicism, the, an arm, a religious arm of the Phoenicians, they exist to confuse us. That's it. These, and, these, and you only have to look for yourself or listen for yourself. Just use your senses and see. These popes and these uh, cardinals that are elected to these high positions within the Catholic Church, listen to them. Look at them. They are evil, horrible people. They have nothing to do with the message of Christ Jesus, which was no possessions whatsoever, which was love, which was holistic truth, and which was a journey. And, and that's, what, that's what we are. We are all, and some people will take offense to this, and that's okay. I'm not here to be, to be loved. I'm here to share the whole truth, because that's what's needed on this beautiful, precious precious earth of ours now. We're, we're, we're getting late in the game and we have no time for niceties. We have only time left for the whole truth. And the whole truth is that what we're here for is to take on the journey that Christ Jesus did for us first and essentially to raise ourselves up into heaven at the right hand side of God. Except heaven isn't a place up in the cloud somewhere invisible heaven is here on earth heaven is maintaining your physical body heaven is inside of your head where the mercy seat of god is where the claustrum is where the third ventricle of your brain is heaven on earth is uniting two worlds into one the physical and the and, metaphysical. and being at peace with yourself if you're at peace with yourself you're in heaven in your brain aren't you you know whatever exactly. that is, whatever that is whichever bit you want you know, if you know yourself, you're at peace for that way because you know yourself. That's exactly right. And again, listen to all of these words that we're using here. Like you said, you're at peace with yourself. What is another, what is another word for, for peace? Balance, harmony, and ultimately homeostasis. If you don't know yourself, you can't look at any of this stuff, can you, Charlie? Because if you don't know who you are and what you want, then you'll always be, oh, but I do want, no, that, this, no, uh, you'll never, but when you know who you are, everything changes. Absolutely. And this is, what you just said is the absolute highest truth. And remember, everything that exists is God's creation, everything. And God wants you to succeed. God wants all of us to go on this journey and to succeed. So everywhere within nature, naturally, Everything is designed to help us. Therefore, 
everything that they do, and when I say they, I'm specifically talking about organized society. This is a this is a team. They're all in it together. It's one massive conspiracy to help the few rule the many. They're in it together. Money, it together. and it's all to do with money, isn't it? Not to do with the people. And, and of course, they don't need any money. They already own everything. So the only reason that money exists, like we said in part one, is to give us something to do with, with our day so that we don't sit down and fucking evolve because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go on these incredible journeys, but instead they put invisible borders and nationalities and you're a British citizen. We made us hate citizen. each other, basically. We hate each other now. We've got, we're narcissistic. We're just about everything that we shouldn't be. Exactly right. And what they've turned this into is a complete upside down journey, a ride. And so when you're searching for the truth, essentially take what you're seeing in organized society and reverse it. And there's the truth. And you literally can do that. They, they have made this so easy to draw connections and to piece things together because all you have to do is observe what they're doing and do the opposite. So one of the first things is the danger of living in a city. Colleen and I, we run an animal rescue sanctuary here in Mexico. We exist in the middle of nowhere. We're in the countryside. We're surrounded by fields of sugarcane and soya and corn um, and beautiful animals. And, and so it is peace. It's, it's a, it's a portion of heaven on earth here. And it's, it allows us to be able to do our daily meditation, to stay uh, um, calm, to do our breathing and to, to just live in peace and in harmony so that when any challenges occur, they're easy. They're, they're no problem. We're not stressed out. But when you're living in the city, when you've got three or four kids, when your marriage is torn apart, which it which it's going to be, it, if you have a failed marriage, don't feel bad. You're supposed to. Your marriages aren't supposed to work. They're supposed to fail. That's you have. You're not taught anything about yourself. You're not taught anything about pleasing your partner. You're not taught anything about the sexes and knowing how to do it because the journey to yourself has got to be yours. But it's like most people don't even know how to get there. It looks they look at it and probably go, whoa, for me, it happened in my late 20s. I suddenly felt like I, I, I tunneled back to being a child and on the way back, I saw all these things I didn't like. But instead of seeing it through someone else's eyes, like your parents or an angry partner or whatever it was, I saw it through my own eyes. And then that you know, meant I, now I, you know, I'm, I'm not scared of myself. And that's what a lot of people are. They're scared of themselves. Th that, again, is brilliant. They're at, you're absolutely right. And people are. And people are terrified of discovering who they actually are. Because if I'm cracked and broken, I'm useless. And I'm, if I'm broken, I'm broken. But the thing is, we're all broken little children. Most of us didn't have nice parents. Some of us did. Some of us were lucky and had the right parents. But most of us didn't. And so you've got to do this yourself. You do. And 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 I, I'm so thankful for you, Karen, for for having the wisdom to bring all of this up, because this is just this is huge. And I, uh, something I'm going to end on today as well. And and it's this you have the journey that I'm I'm sharing with you. You have to do. And the thing is, folks, what you need to understand is that we there is no end. If you exist, you exist. Existence means existence. Existence means life. It doesn't mean death. If you experience a physical death, it's a choice. It's not a, it's not a de facto uh, uh, fait accompli. You do not have to die of your physical self. And if, if we have time, I can go into a little of that today. Essentially, all we are are cells. Yeah, well, because because it's true and and it's absolutely um, amazing and and of course this process of raising the crystal ball it does lead to everlasting life in the physical. So we don't have to die, we don't have to suffer, and we don't have to play their game. So basically, what you're saying is the word crucifixion has been totally misunderstood. It has, and on purpose, because they teach it to us from a young age, and then they and then they make all these movies about poor old Jesus Christ walking around the Holy Land with his twelve good old buddies until one of them sold him out for some gold coins, 
and um, then he was put to death on a cross horribly. That, that's it's 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 a story. It's a metaphor. It is that's right. And and of course they're teaching you that it's a physical thing because they're taking you away from going within. And the Catholic Church are the biggest biggest liars on on this earth. And they made it a sin for any of their parishioners to um, research this single eye business that Jesus was always talking about in the Bible. Go to any page in the Book of Matthew. And you're gonna you're gonna hear <laughs> you're gonna hear the single eye. Thy eye be single, thy body will fill with light. It's single eye, single eye, single eye, single eye. When you when you pray, you go into a closet, and you're in absolute silence. You don't speak words to God. God already knows what it is that you need. You just have to connect with God in silence. But no, 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 no. Theirs is a prayer, and you speak out loud, and you grab your rosary, and you touch your no. It, they're, everything that they're telling you to do is wrong. It's upside down. They're telling you to do physical. God is, is non-physical. God is metaphysical, therefore is alchemical. So therefore, you must practice what is called alchemical science by going within. And your laboratory for alchemical science is within you. It is the third ventricle of the brain. That's where the Ark of the Covenant is the Ark of the Covenant is between your temples. It's in Solomon's temple. Solo man. Saul, son, O of man. Son of man. The Solomon's temple is the temple of all men, the sons of God, S-U-N or S-O-N, and it's in your head. The only temple ever made without human hands um, is the temple in your head. That's Solomon's temple. That is where your laboratory for alchemical science is. And this is where we do magic. And we can do magic every day. But you have to do it within, and you have to do it in silence. So this whole thing with crucifixion, right, is getting from your physical body into your conscious, subconscious mind. And, and remember, when we left off last time, what we found is that fit both the story physically and then the metaphysical journey that I was taking you on with the chrysomol are both at the same place. They're both at what's called the blood-brain barrier, the separation, the very hard separation at Atlas, the 33rd vertebrae, the capstone of the, the, uh, the essence of the human body, which is the human spine, um, Atlas being the very top the last 33rd vertebrae of the human spine. I suppose when you and think about it, when you think, just thought about it then with crucifixion, our head is the top, our shoulders are the cross and our back goes down, doesn't it? Yeah, so we are the cross that, already. Yeah, when you're looking at the cross that, that Jesus was on, if you take Jesus's body away, you still have Jesus on the cross. The little portion going up above, straight up, is the head. The, the portion, the cross going across are the shoulders and the arms pointing out. And the long piece going straight down is the torso and the legs. That is what's called the fourfold nature of humanity, north, south, west, east. And that's, that's our, and it's our journey in a nutshell. It's where we choose to go. And there are powerful consequences by choosing north, south, west, or east. And we must all choose east. East is the rising sun, is the burnt offering. And the burnt offering that you read about in the Bible is, is you giving a sacrifice. And this is the crucifixion. The sacrifice is when you get to the blood brain barrier, you're offering God the left hemisphere of your brain, which is only 10% of the brain's capacity. That's why we call the left brain the dime brain. It's a, it's a dime brain where we do our dime dancing because we're running around like fools thinking we know everything when we know nothing because they lie to us in our left brain. And so the offering of the on the temple the temple of solomon within us is that we're offering god to crucify to to kill metaphorically the left brain of our existence chaos and 
to give us in return the right brain, which is 90%. And it's where God exists within us. And that's why everything in the Bible is up and to the right. And it's why Jesus said to the fishermen, if you wish to catch fish, which is just the symbol of the constellation Pisces, and Pisces is a representation of wisdom. So if you wish to catch wisdom or God consciousness, the number nine, cast thy net to the right. And they caught 153 fish. Why did they make it so complicated though, Charlie? Why couldn't it have been done a bit more easily? Why is it so, what is it? So that only ascended people get it or what is it? Well, and again, that's a great question. The reason that it is this way is so that it can't be stolen from us. Because remember, the reason that it's written first in the night sky is so that these bastards that rule things from behind the scenes, they can't steal the night sky. They can't take heaven by force. And, and so when we were ending last week, that's why I was sharing with you, this is the true purpose of entertainment and television. It's, it's nighttime entertainment to stop you and your family from doing what we all used to do. Every single British family, Canadian family, what doesn't, all across this vast plain, Africans, South America, whatever, all people at nighttime, they went outside around a fire and they connected as human beings, as family members. And we talked and we shared and we sang songs and we looked up at the stars in the sky and we slowly came to an understanding. But now we're inside watching Simon ridicule. They've done that though, haven't they, Charlie? Because Simon there's so many ridicule. books missing out from the Bible and Enoch's not in there that they've they've taken it they have taken it away. You're saying they can't touch it, but they have they've made sure that we can't see all the information. Right. But again, all the, the all of the content of the book of Enoch, and you're right, they've suppressed a ton every every one of these so-called disciples had a book. There there's a book from from virtually every perspective and they've so much of it has been suppressed so much of it has been suppressed on on purpose because it's always that you've always got to go to someone else to get it you can never do this yourself when it's the kind of state we're in now in the place we live right now with governments but you can never do this yourself can you you've always got to go to someone else to get it that's the point well, well that yeah that and that that's what they want and now the truth is of course is that is that it's it's harder work now because we've fallen so far so there's we we've wasted so many years of our lives and now we have to get rid of what we do know because it's all just lies and we have to re-educate ourselves on our own time while we're working jobs to have enough money to survive we have to re-educate ourselves and all the things that are important so it is hard but it's not impossible and learning about the um about the night sky and astrology isn't isn't rocket science nothing that that god created is difficult it's it's understandable and because everything is just our, our allegories they're, they're these wondrous symbols and that's why there are these constellations all resemble things because what they resemble is at the heart of the message and you so that you'll remember it so it's not hard you just have to take the time to do it and you do have to do this process and you have to learn about this process. It is strange though, isn't it? When I was just thinking of animals, cause you've got the dogs and the cats there. All they do, they be, they don't think like we, they, they're just being, they're be, every day is they're just being. Whereas we're not, we're completely frozen inside. Well, most of us are frozen inside people generally. Yeah, again, brilliant. And what you're talking about being is called living in the moment which is all that exists. Linear time doesn't exist. They're lying to us. It, it's, we agree to linear time because it helps us get from point A to point B. Uh, I know how they get, do it because yeah. they make sure that the, yeah, the future yeah. looks frightening because everything's uncertain between America and Russia and there's wars. And then, you know, they filter out those harp and CERN and all these bombs and, you know, uh, cold energy weapons, all this stuff gets leaked out to us. So we're all in fear. Behind us looks like, 
like uh, depressions, uh, you know, before the war, everybody was in depressed and, you know, wars and it's, and so, and then today they're, they're wrecking everything by making sure that you can't connect with yourself by, like you say, keeping us busy, keeping us slaves. And so there's no time to think when actually that's what you need to think. That's right. That that's all we need to do is is to to think. You can do your journey physically, and it, and it's a great journey. And again, how many of us as youngsters wanted to put a backpack on and just backpack across Europe, or eventually make it down to to Australia or New Zealand and go across Africa? Just journey, journey, journey. The physical journey is amazing because you meet so many different people and cultures and you find out that we're so alike, even in all of our differences, we're so alike. And it makes it makes the the entire earth seem so much smaller and and it gives you so much hope. You mean if people are honest with themselves, we're all alike. But a lot of people aren't though, are they? That's the thing. But anyway, this is what we're here for, so we can hear how to do it or to understand it. Yeah. Understanding is half of it, isn't it? It is. That's right. It's it's and it's the first part. And and the physical journey is important, but you can also do the journey metaphysically. And that this is why meditation is absolutely essential that uh, I'm going to be releasing um, uh, relatively soon a, a, a hugely important video where I'll actually be showing everyone tricks on how to clear your mind because it's so hard to do because they fill your mind with just horrible things about your family and your exes and money and mortgages and loans and, and all these things. It's terrible. I know, I know we're on it, but it really means you need to turn the television off. It, yes, you do. And, and you need to be in control of your five physical senses. That is the left brain. The five physical senses dominate the left brain through the moon, the moon goddess, and her name is Sin, S-I-N, is the name of the goddess of the moon, because the only real sin that exists is emotion. And emotion is the moon goddess Sin, who rules over our five physical senses and we must kill we must sacrifice we must crucify the left brain because the left brain is ruled over by the moon goddess sin which is an out which is an allegory for emotions we are reckless emotional beings when we're in our left brain we're, we're logical we're reasoning but it's our emotions that cloud our judgments and determine what it is that we do. When we're in the right brain, it's sans emotions. There is, There are no emotions in the right brain. There just is acceptance of what is in the moment. And that's like you said earlier, that's animals. Animals don't live in the left brain. Animals are connected to us and to God and to mother earth and creation in all moments. They're just there looking at us waiting for us to get out of depression so we can play with them and have fun. That's that's what they do. The rest of the time they just sit there kind of disappointed because we're just absorbed in all of our problems. And it's it's sad. It's sad because we're not supposed to live like that. So meditation, going within is so important because this is the crucifixion. This is how we get past the blood brain barrier from the physical body ruled over by the moon goddess sin emotion and into the brain which is god's realm uh upon high can i tell you something else as well i went years ago and i was getting married the church there they were a methodist church they asked if i wanted to do this philosophical course so i said yeah i'd do it but in it what it was is they're saying that, that, that Eve was made eternal. You know, Eve is supposed to de obviously depict women, but because she allowed uh, Adam to eat the apple, then women now carry that guilt. I know in in a religious way, I'm talking. That's how they saw it. That women carry that guilt now. That's well, that's the eternal guilt women have, because we made Adam eat the apple. Right. Once again. Once again, the the physicality of an allegorical story allegory is just a tale so it's metaphysical and they're turning it into a physical sin 
and keeping you as a slave of your left brain. That's everything they do. I think that's the whole point, isn't it? We're basically put into sin. Everything you've done is wrong. You've got to repent. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. But you don't. (laughs) Exactly. The only sin, again, let me repeat that. The only sin that we can create is to is to arrogantly deny God in the right hemisphere of our brain by living exclusively. And that's what virtually everyone, I mean, we're not even talking 90%, we're talking 99.99999% of all humanity live exclusively out of their left brain, north, south, west. North, south, west is all to the left. And that left brain is ruled over by our five physical senses and they're controlled by our emotions and they organize society they own our emotions they own us through our emotions and they trigger us with the littlest things taxation it's taxation season yeah Yeah, because animals what my point is animals are here they don't feel guilty or all these things they don't feel like that. It's a man-made thing to punish us, but we're not here to be punished. Do you know what it seems that they've done? Because I know that you understand the whole thing about etymology and that and spells and what words mean. But, you know, like if you talk to someone who's understood about etymology, a son or even one word had a story to it. And it's what it is, is they've taken all the stories away. You know, like where I live, around where I live, there's a place called Hunger Food. Well, the Ford on it, was because originally that place had a ford, water. But most people won't know that now because they've taken all the meanings away from the words. That's right. They, they've taken your, your reason and purpose to think for yourselves away. Don't think. We've done it for you. That's how they get away with the global lie. That's how they get away with the nonsense of we're spinning around at a thousand miles an hour um, and we're hurtling through space and we're tilting and wobbling. It, it is ridiculous. Well, do you know what I think they've done, Charlie? I think they sent us to boot camp, but they forgot to tell us. So it's like a military thing. This isn't being done for the people. This is all a system. A, a, you know, it's all a cover-up. It's all, it's all wrong. It's like the wrong parody. It's wrong everything. It's wrong. That's right. It's wrong everything. You, you summed it up beautifully there, and that's exactly right. It's wrong everything, and we must run away from it. And you don't, like... For, for Colleen and I, we literally did run away because we live, we went from Canada to um, the middle of, of the countryside in Mexico. What, we, what we've come to understand is that you don't have to do that physically. You can, own, you can do that just as successfully metaphysically via the discipl- disciplining your mind through meditation. So you don't have to to run away and even if you're just renting and even if you're in a building in the middle of a concrete jungle you can still start on the rooftop and start planting fruits and vegetables uh, on your rooftop and start taking back control of your life because ultimately we have to get back to providing the essentials for ourselves and we don't need them. And again, if if you're allowing yourself and your kids to watch TV, you're lost. If you allow yourself and your kids to go to Hollywood movies, you're lost. If you're allowing your kids to go to public schools run by governments and corporations, you're lost, they're lost. These, none of this is public, it's all private. It's all privately owned. And what they teach are lies. And the lies are designed for one thing, and that's ownership. And I was listening to him, because very often people still, even if they say they've woken up, they have a party alliance. They can't help it. In their mind, they feel a bit more like that or a bit more like that. But because he's never voted and because it's never been important to him, because he can't vote for it, because it just doesn't work, none of that system, he doesn't have a preference towards that one or that one. He just doesn't like any of them. Do you see what I mean? That's where we've got to get to. And I know it's hard to turn you back because I said to him yesterday, well, if we stopped voting for it, but he said, yeah, but then they can mess with the figures, can't they? They can pretend we voted when we didn't just to keep everybody in. But it was just refreshing to hear someone not be affiliated to anything because they've never believed in it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Um, they, They can and they will lie about everything. So it's not enough to just not vote. If you're a willing participant, 
of organized society, then you're a willing participant of slavery and... Um, so that's what, is that what crucifixion is then? It's, it's the way out of, of slavery. The way out of slavery is at the individual level, and that's it. No individual can exist in a society. And so the answer is the individual, which means that one by one, family by family, we just have to take back our existence by opting out and providing for ourselves. So if you want to do it in the country, in another country, or right in the dead center of London, whatever, it can be done. You just have to provide for yourself. You, you have to. And of course, the, the average person will simply say, I can't because I have obligations, because I'm in debt. And of course, as I explained in part one, you can't have debt. You can't have interest on principle because the moment that you charge an interest to principle, then you've, you've bankrupted the system because now there's, there's more than what the original principle, which is the basis of, of everything. Honest, they've made everybody so superficial. Everything you're talking about is very deep because I have a lovely book. And it was explaining what a spiritual master was. Know yourself, see yourself, accept yourself, and be yourself. Most people don't even know all these things. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. And, and that is probably the greatest sin that they are committing, which is that they are taking millions of, of people, perhaps billions, who knows what the real population figures are. We don't, they lie to us about everything. But... Um, but they are taking millions, potentially billions of people and denying them the ability to ever once in their life know something real, know themselves or have this connection to God. And, and again, this is, oh, I, when I say this again, I, I, I hope everyone understands that I'm saying this completely humbly. I'm not holding anything over anyone else. It, it's just our choice and our journey. But Colleen and I exist via meditation out of the right hemisphere of our brain. As such, we've opened a, it's like a permanent connection with, with God. And so that there's a, a steady stream of information. You can, it's almost like a conversation. You just, it's just different. Um, it, it amounts to the same thing. It's just in a different form because it's metaphysical instead of physical. But when you do this, the, the gift is so beautiful it, and it provides you with everything. Somehow, some way, everything works out that you have to trust. You just have to trust and you have to do this work. It's, it's what's called putting oil in your lamp. In the Bible, they talk about the, um, the, uh, the 12 uh, virgins in the Bible. And uh, I think it was, it was 12 virgins, right? And and six of them had oil in their lamps and six didn't have oil in their lamps. And therefore the six that did were able to be ready when the, the Christos or Christ Jesus finally appeared back where he was staying late at night. The other six who did not have oil in their lamps were not present and they missed that opportunity. And later when they came to the house where Christ Jesus was and they asked admittance to come in, Christ Christ Jesus said, I do not know you. I do not know you because you have no oil in your lamp. Oil in your lamp is doing the work. And this is alchemical science in the laboratory of Solomon, which is inside of you. And the only way you can do this work is via meditation. So breathing is so important. And yoga is so important. And the words that we choose, because as you wisely said, they're, the words are powerful and magic, so they're spells. Using white magic and the correct language is so important. What we eat and what we drink is so important. And we just create this beautiful alkaline existence because life is alkalinity. Death is acidity. And think about it. Think about this, folks. Everything, both in terms of thought and in foods, everything that society pushes on us is acid meat dairy eggs I, I, we're not even we don't have time to even go into the horrors of what this means to these beautiful sentient beings that that they should be killed so that somebody else can eat it's unbelievable but beyond that meat dairy and eggs are massively acidic i'm just saying it's the truth 
It's not designed to offend, it's the truth. Meat, dairy, and eggs are acidic. So if you eat meat, dairy, and eggs as the basis to your diet, you're gonna die and you're gonna die early and you're gonna die from some horrific, painful disease because it's acid. And if you drink Coca-Cola and um, you know sugary beverages like this all the time, or if you drink alcohol, Again, acid, 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 acid. And what, what is every single commercial on TV? It's either pushing acid or selling antacid because that's what humanity has become. It's an acid factory. It's an acid factory in our stomachs and it dumbs us down so that we sit around watching Simon Says. Or sit you know, unfortunately watching, though, Charlie, says, says, you're who you are with what you know. And if you watch the television all the time or you don't have people who are wise or have learned anything. They're only going to tell you the wrong things. But that's people only know, you know, they don't know they don't know even. That's right. So, you know, again, uh, just, just so that people know and understand where we're coming from, um, Colleen and I are, are vegans. And, and again, people just get all bent out of shape when they heard, hear the word vegan, like it's some kind of subversive psyop or government operation. You know, you know what veganism is? It just means you don't eat meat, nor do you consume any products that partake in the murder of, of animals. So there's no agenda attached to that. It's, it's just a choice and it's choosing life over death. Here, here's, here's the key. When you say no to animal proteins, and when you say yes to the alternative, which is the plant-based world, the plant-based world is created via sunlight. Sunlight is alkalinity. So when you eat plant-based foods, that's right. And everything for us, we, we do still, uh, Colorball loves her potatoes and sweet potatoes and stuff. So once in a while, we, we will cook up, um, you know, fry up a breakfast or something like that. Um, because when you cook foods, you're, you're taking some of their essence away and you can even change their pH from slightly alkaline to slightly acidic and whatnot. But again, cooking foods all the time is absolutely wrong. What we need to be doing is raw. And the best way of eating, com complete best way, is what we do, which is juicing. And I, I make up two juices. I do a veggie-based juice and I do a fruit-based juice. And you're drinking life and you can feel it as you're drinking it. You're just drinking life. It gives you energy, it gives you strength. And the, the sickness in this household doesn't exist. We don't have time to, to be sick anyways because we're so busy with, with all the research that we do, all the podcasts we do and all the books that we write and then all the work we do with the animals. We don't have time for it, but there's no sickness in this, this home and there can't be because our bodies are alkaline. Alkalinity is health, is life. Acidity is death. So whatever society pushes like pizza, it, it, here's something for people to understand. For example, one of the worst foods you could possibly ever eat, and it's what people are addicted to, and I'll explain why, is cheese. Cheese is the worst form of food you could possibly eat because cheese they take massive amounts of, of liquid cow milk to be able to coagulate it into very small concentrated amounts of solid cheese. So it's an enormous amount of cow's milk into just one. So what you're saying is you're getting like a, a million boost because it's layers and layers of this stuff. So it's a yeah. million boost of the, of the wrong thing. Oh God, I like cheese. <laughs> yeah, i tell you why. The reason is, is because the, the um, essentially the, uh, the amino acids, the basis of the, what you break down all food to, the basis of cheese is very, very similar to heroin. And so when you ingest cheese, the heroin receptors in your brain they are activated because they sense heroin. And so what they do is they receive the, the molecules, uh, the particles, the uh, amino acids, the, um, uh, the protein content of, of cheese. They receive it and they intake it 
into your brain via these um, heroin receptors. So when it goes into your body, it does the exact same thing that heroin does, which is it puts you into this alternative state. It takes you out of yourself. I think, I think they've done it also with monosuta, whatever it's called, monosuta. I can't say it now. It's in crisps and things. It gives the flavoring. It's so addictive. And so you want yes. the crisps, really, because that, you're wanting the... the yeah. yeah. Also, we've had many hangouts with Josh, and he's the same. Like, he's tried to explain to people. They talk about meat being protein, but the animal got the protein from the grass, and you're eating it secondhand through a dead piece of meat. It, it's it's ridiculous. The, the biggest, strongest creatures everywhere across this vast plain are all either uh, frugivores or um, pure vegetarians or... Uh, you know, they're just grass eaters. And again, when you, when a person says, well, I eat meat for the protein first, you, you don't need, the human body doesn't need very much protein. We need hardly any protein. We don't need protein. What we need is, is the, um, is the nutrients from the sun. That's right. We need real food, which comes from sunlight. So we just need that liquid chlorophyll. We need that liquid sunshine, which is the chlorophyll from green living plants. That's what we need. And, and again, if you want protein, oh my God, vegetables are loaded. So are, so are fruits, but in, in certain types of vegetables like broccoli, you know, a, a small sprig of broccoli has more, pro, double the protein than an eight ounce, uh, you know, red meat steak. It, it's, it's unbelievable. And do you know, and do you know what's really bad though? Even if say the meat was meat, it's not anymore, is it? It's chemicals, hormones. It's horrible things in there, which we're eating. It is. And, and folks, again, beyond all of that, think about this. Right now, right now, to be able to feed this brainwashed world population with animals, it means that every single year, now this isn't just once every 10, this is every year, we have to force breed, artificially force breed, a trillion sentient beings, whether they're cows or fish or pigs or whatever, we have to force breed a trillion animals, mammals, insects, whatever. Um, and then because there's so many of them, we make them live in absolute horrific conditions. So we're inflicting torture upon them. And so they live in absolute sickness. So they're filled with nothing but um, hormones and antibiotics um, going raging back and forth within them. And then they are finally killed in very unmerciful ways. And the animals are freaking out because they're incredibly intelligent and they know what's coming and they know they're going to be killed. And they're releasing all of these horrific hormones. If, if you knew what was going on, you wouldn't do it. So a trillion sentient beings every single year are, are force bred, are raised in torture, and then are murdered, filled, as you said, with all of these horrific hormones and, and chemicals within them. And then you're asked to eat it. And again, I'm telling you, guaranteeing you, what you're eating is acid. Do any test yourself. I've done this on other podcasts. Just get a piece of litmus paper and, and apply it, meat, dairy, eggs, and it is horrifically low. It is red, red, red on the litmus paper. It is acid. And acid is death. Alkalinity is blue, which is the color of the higher spiritual mind, ascension to God, the right hemisphere of the brain. And that comes through plant life, the sun, God. And we are the, we are the son and daughters of God, S-U-N or S-O-N. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing. And so we're connected to God via the sun and we eat the sun. So in, in our screwed up upside down world, we're even taught to fear the sun. We're taught that if you go out into the sun without protection, you'll get skin cancer. Oh my fucking God. How dumb do you have to fucking be? That, yeah, it's the basis to God's creation. But if you go out in it, you're going to get something horrific like cancer and die. It just means that you don't believe in God. It means that you're buying this, this uh, bullshit um, new science uh, where they lie to us left, right, and center. What gives you cancer? 
are the sunscreens you put on your skin. When you go in the sun, when you go in the sun, the sun is alkaline. It's diseasing yourself. Dis-ease. 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 The sun is ease. Go out into the sun. And hey, listen, you know how you know when you need to get out of the sun? It's called common sense. Check it out. Check it out. Get some. Go to the store and buy some if you need to. I suppose they've got to make the other one though, haven't they? Because they're making the stars and the and the planets and all that. They're making the millions of miles away, so they've got to make something else up. That's right. And remember, think how hard they have to work to tell these lies and to maintain their lie. When you create a lie, you're a slave to that lie forever because what is is the truth and a lie isn't and that's what lie that's isn't. what people don't understand with this whole thing about flat earth it's not just about the land it's about everything and a lot of it has to do with you and your spirituality and all of it all of that and i just don't understand why people don't understand that exactly and this is what i i try and teach so much uh to to you know people who are hearing all of this for the first time look look do nothing more than just open your eyes and look into the distance and I, what what i want you to notice is how everything on the left side and the right side come together to a vanishing point in the distance right at your eye level everything above you and below you come together at a vanishing point in the distance right at your eye level so everything even just a hallway in a, in a building like a school if you look at the hallway you can tell and it's just a hundred hundred feet or you know uh, 30 meters or something like that and you can see the massive shrinking of of the um, hallway in front of you that's what's called our perspective vision now we were given this for a reason the reason is is that it's showing you the purpose to life. And this is a wonderful way to end the podcast today, which, you know, ultimately we could even call the podcast today, which is. Well, I was in, wondering whether we should call this hangout on the way to crucifixion. <laughs> on the way to crucifixion, down the path that is straight and narrow. Because here's the key. When, when you look out of your eyes into the distance, everything runs on a path that is straight and narrow and it goes until a vanishing point in the distance. And that, that point in the distance is a little dot. And then all around what we're looking out of our round eyes is a circle. And so, yeah, exactly. But it's also flat earth, right? Because what you're looking at, at the vanishing point in the distance, that dot, that tiny, tiny dot in the exact center, that's the North Pole. And the, the field of your vision in a circle, because your eyes are round, around the whole exterior of what it is that you're seeing is a circle. Is a, and in between it is a vast circular plane. And that's flat earth. If, if you just simply took it from looking straight out into the distance and tilted it on its side where we ascended up above and looked down, we're looking at flat earth. So that's what I'm, I'm saying. Every moment that you take the freaking time to open your eyes and look into the distance, it's showing you that the earth is flat. It's showing you your reality and it's showing you what we're here to do, which is to travel the path that is straight and narrow. And everywhere in the Bible, it says, Christ Jesus says everywhere, follow the path that is straight and narrow. Few will take it and few will ascend and meet God. The many will take the path that is wide and they will meet destruction. So their path, their path is wide. Yeah, yeah it's been really interesting, Charlie. Um, thank you very much. And uh, while well, I've got this opportunity, I love you and I love everyone who's listening. So take care for now. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you, Patricia. And we actually, we will say goodbye when I finish pressing the button, Charlie, but for the hangout, we're going to end, but I look forward to part three, Charlie. Mwah, thank you.